I love this, this sort of work. And I think God laid this on my way. Also, I've got the, the passion in my heart to help these people as well. Since being in prison, Morris has converted to Christianity. Quirbus sees this as one of the great success stories in his crusade against Satan. He's brought along an evangelical pastor to encourage Morris's new beliefs. Um, I'm here basically uh, also with investigation in another method. I'm also here because you want God in your life and not the devil anymore. And we know that, uh, that uh, uh, we believe that uh, the devil is a reality. I don't know what you think about the devil because we know there's many people who say that, 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 that Satan does not exist, that the devil is not a reality. What do you say about that? No, nah, he exists. He's the reason I'm here today. I mean, he's, he's real as, as, as real as anything. I mean, if he wasn't real, I wouldn't have spent 10, 12 years of my life worshipping him yeah. and getting involved in doing the things that I did. Mm. I mean, he's real. Yeah. What made you get involved with Satanism? How did you, you know, how did it come about? Well, you know, I just, from being with, I started hanging around with the wrong crowd, really, to, mm -hmm. basically, that's how it really started. Right. And um, uh, from listening to them and stuff, they said that Satan promised you all these things like money and popularity and that kind of stuff, women and... Mm. You know, all the kind of things when you're growing up, you kind of long Looking for. for. Remember now, just to go back, uh, the day of your arrest, mm -hmm. when I was there at your home, there were certain bands that portrayed certain messages over, especially this, this one specific band. And I think you had the Slayer. Slayer, yeah. You had it on your hand as well. You can mm -hmm. just, you yeah, just show it. Still there. So it's still there. So w what, what role did Slayer uh, this band, what if you listen to the lyrics? No. Uh, uh, what did it bring inside your, inside of you? What sort of uh, hate feeling? Uh, anger, violence, um, just craziness. I mean, uh, it changes your whole personality. When I committed the murder, mm -hmm. while I was committing, the, while I was chopping the guy's hair off, um, you know, I was chanting words from the, the, the songs, slayers, songs, one of the slayer songs. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Gemini, mm -hmm. which is from the um, one of the later albums, mm -hmm. and um, basically it says, "I am your God, and I am in control, and I take your life, and I am your life." Remember, you've already been judged for the crime you've committed. God, out of His great love for you, will forgive you, and I would like to pray with you and trust God with you. Do you mind if we just pray together and trust God together with you? Come on, just give me a hand. We just get together. Father, we come to you in the precious name of Jesus and we thank you that Morris today has been created in your image, has been not just created in your image, but you have never, never, God, undermined the quality of the life. Now I thank you, Father, in the name of Jesus. Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for loving me. At police headquarters in Pretoria, Rietta has been studying the identikit of a young woman who sent the note in the Rena Radloff murder case. Until now, the police suspected that the woman was either Martin Radloff's daughter or his wife, Antoinette. Rietta is convinced the identikit looks more like Antoinette. Quirbus and Rietta are now planning to go to Machalisburg, where the note was posted, to see if the postmistress can pick out Antoinette from a selection of photographs. Bye -bye. Thanks, sir. Um, we need to 
introduced Beta to you already. Mm -hmm. So th there's photos that's going to be shown to you, like an ID parade. There's going to be eight photos at first. Mm -hmm. And then she, she's going to explain the whole pr procedure to you. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if, if the suspect is there, you point her out. And now I'll be called in after that. But, but at this time, I'm leaving you. I can't be present when we do this because it must just be you and her at this okay. time. Okay. Okay, we can turn around. It's a, in, you start from number one on that side. You turn them around, have a look at it before you turn the next one. Okay, and then up to number eight, and only then you yeah. tell me if, if the, the suspect is amongst these photographs. Okay. Photographs of Antoinette are in positions six and eight. Actually, not allowed to, um, okay, if to she's say. The same woman, then I'll pick her. Number six and number eight. With this positive identification, the case against Antoinette is looking strong. Now, Rietta's got hold of some new evidence, which she hopes may wrap it up. At the time of the murder, Antoinette claims she was 50 miles away with a friend. The police need to break her alibi. We've uh, received uh, the cell phone records of um, Antoinette Radloff and the, the printouts put her at the scene of the murder or very close to it because on the day of the murder, the time was 1837 when that is her cell phone number and she phoned from the area where the murder house is, she phoned the house and the call lasted two seconds. And when we saw that, and the time of the murder, that she was actually there, and this really gives us the ammunition to really go out and arrest her. Antoinette is due to appear in Port Shepstone Magistrates Court, accused of theft and assaulting a woman police officer when questioned about it. With Inspector Goldstone, Cuevas and Rieta are planning to arrest her when she appears in court the following day. They've been told that she's pregnant, and in the light of her alleged assault, they need to plan the arrest carefully. What do you suggest the, 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 the approach tomorrow morning? I suggest to the colonel, but this is totally up to you, that, that you actually approach her. You know, and no, you I will approach her. No, because if we approach her, then, right. then of course it's going to be hassles. Yeah. I think you approach her and just take a, you say uh, you, you, you're just going to have a chat about this case, take we can take the, the statement, as I think it would be the easiest and the best, the, you know, especially if she's got to the was, 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 was well. I would, I would also suggest that um, once, once we've um, informed her, as in touchdown, now you're under arrest, that we handcuffed her and she's going to be handcuffed behind her back. I'm not going to take the risk because the woman is pregnant and if she's going to throw her down, herself down on the floor and that's why I'm not going to be alone with her in the office. She's going to accuse me and you or who's with her of assaulting her and I'm not going to take that chance. No, we should, no obviously she must. To handcuff no. her is not a problem because then nobody will get hurt. Because if she's going to attack me, because I'm going to attack her. Uh, she, she's, she's, she's got a personality she's of being aggressive. She has attacked people in the past. So, uh, we don't no, know I'm, what sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. But we can discuss it later. No, no, yes. You're going to be able to sleep tonight? Well, I haven't been I mean, sleeping we too well the last... I don't, I don't know if you've <laughs> caught a spell on me or something. No, like no, <laughs> no. Those of us... I think they've all put the spell on us all. No, nobody puts a spell on me that will remain there, I promise you. I will not allow them to do that.